is Akutami just making like the the sad sad rounds? Like the last chapter with Panda came out of nowhere, and I'm sure it'll hold more weight later on in the arc when Panda gets more of a spotlight, and we can see where exactly the you know the 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 story uh, from Panda's perspective continues. But from uh, this one, like, we see what's going on primarily with Maki. I mean, this had more to do, I think, with established new events with Mugumi becoming head of the uh, Zenin clan after uh, Naobito ended up dying. And it just made me really dislike the Zenin clan more. I'm sure a lot of people felt the same way. Like, outside of, like, Maki, my to a degree, like, my isn't, like... She isn't vile. She kind of just seems a little bit rude. Like, she's got a little bit of a bitch side to her, but there's nothing that crazy. Whereas, like, when you compare it to people like, uh, Naoya, or as we see in this chapter, freaking Maki's parents are both a-holes. Like, they both suck ass. It was really upsetting. I, I thought at least one of them would be somewhat okay, but it makes sense why Maki has such a strong, uh, hold, like, emotionally towards her sister, because, like, it, it's very clear that they... They only had really each other, and like her parents, uh, like her parents sucked. Like the higher ups in the Zenin clan sucked. They're just a bunch of like, like it's just a big petty political battle going on between them. They're, like they don't seem to have any form of real, uh, like a real uh, setup or direction of the betterment of their clan or of the Jujutsu world. It's more of just. How can each of them get to the highest position and hold the most power just to, you know, to, to be at the top? They don't seem to have anything outside of that. It's not even like one of those things where it's like, oh, I should be the leader for X reasons. Or I have a, I, I, you know, I clearly have a better idea of where to direct the clan. They just seem to really just want to have all the power and all the influence. And it's, again, it, it makes sense. Like, you know, that, that happens in real life, you know, as pol politics can be really, again, petty and really horrible. But it's just like... Man, you have all these crazy monsters and all these bad guys and, and, and like, psycho villains and stuff in your world. You guys just lost the greatest level of power that the side of humanity has with Satoru Gojo. And they're just, they're just being really, uh, again, really vile about it. And again, like, it, it's very clear, like, none of the guys in the Zenin clan really are that good. And it honestly makes a lot more sense of why Toji was the way he was. Like, he just grew up in like an awful environment everything about the zenin clan just seems to be putrid and we see in this chapter like we we get like direct on panel of both of maki's parents i i saw that maki's dad was in it but i didn't notice until like i reread it that maki's mom was the person that uh she came across it's like it's like on top of that uh, megumi ended up like we know he got directed as like the head of the of uh, the client and there's like they they had like a moment between Maki and uh, Megumi talking about it, and she made a lot of sense of why it would, you know, you, why you'd want to pick him. He's got, like, he he figured out how to use a domain expansion. This isn't complete, but it's still, like, on the right path for it. He was favored and trained by Satoru Goju himself, who obviously had a lot of talent, a lot of power there. And then he inherited, like, the clan's technique with, like, the the whole, like, Chiyami and, and whatnot. He's got a lot of just outright real reasons of why you'd want to pick him and they're just like they're just oh you know whatever whatever i'm like it, it, it's kind of annoying like i i would be really bothered just to be around these guys like not even involved and especially when you think about uh the abilities of these characters and you really think about what they can do because like the head of the clan and like the head of you know of these clans has to be powerful like these guys are the you know supposedly going to be the the leading force of the jutsu world and if they're not capable what are they really gonna do? I, I don't think for a second any of the other characters within the Zenin clan can do, it would do anything against a special grade. And we know that Megumi, like Megumi is not like he, you know, walked through people like Joko or Dagon or whatever, but it's like he was, he's inexperienced, like not entirely, but you know, he's just young. You give him a couple of years and I'm sure that he'll be like as Sotoro thinks, like way closer to that level as that special grade, absurdly powerful human level. So it's like, these other guys, what would they do? Run away? Because Maki's dad, like, she just, like, he just has, like, what, like, a, some form of ice sword or something, cursed energy sword, because she ends up breaking his, uh, his blade when, like, he confronts her, and then has, like, this, um, 
I, I assume it's ice or some form of energy coming along like the broken portion of the blade and like what is that gonna really do when you, like if you got put against anybody actually a, a like significant value and like maki's strong but we know that maki is really is, she's like technique and like brute force like she isn't she's not one of these guys that really when you get down to it like the bigger people in the series that, that she just has like a you know a, a, like a crazy move that she doesn't she could get like a, to a degree depending on the cursed object she has because she was going to use the you know the key and the authorization from megumi because he was the head of the clan of going to where all these cursed objects were i'm, I'm guessing she was going to get you know whatever is best for her so she can kind of close that gap maybe get like a really unfair very powerful uh tool from their storage but she ends up like running into her dad and like she passes her mom and both of them just don't care about her like her mom's just like Oh, you know, maybe uh, for the first time you can make me proud, uh, you know, that I gave birth to you. And then her dad is like, you know why my brother was picked as the head and not me? It's because my children were both useless. And I'm just like, man, like these guys are some ripe assholes. They're just not pleasant to be around at all. And I, I, like, I'm hoping so bad that we get to see them, you know, get taken down. And not just get taken down. Like, we need to see some of these guys get killed. Like, if they're just this bad from the go. And it's not like... It's not one of those times where it seems like maybe they're they're not being fully truthful. They're not being very honest. Like I'm guessing with just like you know one-on-one -on -one conversations casually, you know, like this dude's legitimately one. They said it was his idea to take out uh, Maki and uh, Megumi because they're like, oh, you know, we can use this as like saying that they were trying to unseal Satoru Gojo. We know that they are, but they they're assuming so, and they want to use that as like leverage to kill them and justify it and put themselves back at like a more favorable position uh within the clan i'm just like man if you if you're this incapable and this uh, not on top not only that like i said like this is this is his extent is just having like what like an extra sword blade what is he really gonna do because now Bito, even though he was a bad dude he had a really good ability that whole weird fps power where he just like locks somebody in a frame so he can just get pretty much free hits on him that was a good power and, like, if he had, like, a really OP weapon, like, imagine if he got something in that, like, he would get a free shot on. And, like, it would really depend on the full extent of what weapon he would use and, like, what its abilities would be. But if he could get something that would just be, like, oh, you know, if this hits you, you know, whatever effect takes place, you know, very detrimental hit-in. But it's, like, if he can get a free hit-in, then good, he's gonna, he's gonna land, uh, you know, way more devastating hits than, like, what, like, now, uh, now he has, seems to just be fast. Maki's dad is just like what like a skilled swordsman like these guys aren't gonna really amount to the role that they're pushing for like where Megumi can and Megumi will like they just they just have to they just have to pretty much get out of his way and he'll just get powerful enough that eventually he'll be able to again move up the ladder and present himself to where he can just completely smoke these guys so, Maki in the end of the chapter gets cut. I don't think she's dead. I think this is just going to be... or Well, I don't think she's going to die. She's definitely not dead. There was no indication she was dead at the end of the chapter. But you know what I mean? Like, she's not... This isn't it for her. I think she's going to beat her dad. I, I'm really hoping that she can just get, like, a solid punch directly into his face. Because he's clearly, like, strong in comparison. But I'm willing to bet that he isn't physically stronger than her. She's using a curse tool from... Um, what the, What are the guy's name? Is the dude who made like uh furniture and objects out of people uh what they think is they say his name in the chapter juzu kamiya uh his masterpiece dragon bone and what it does it's like it's like a weird sword with like essentially a cursed energy propulsion set to it so she had like this more powerful way to punt, uh, like uh just like enhance her attacks to cut right through uh the sword so she's got something good like she still has the potential and he didn't break the weapon, so it's not like she doesn't have that anymore. It's just like he got a cut in her, and she's durable. I mean, she took an attack from freaking uh, Jogo and lived. So I think she's got the full capability, the full grit, and the full strength to keep fighting and hopefully beat the hell out of her dad in the next chapter. So looking forward to that. Um, it was a pretty fast read chapter. Like I didn't have a ton to say about it because it was a very, it was very set on Maki and. It was really just setting up the events as to what happened in the, uh, you know, in the later end of the chapter. It was a setup chapter, essentially. And, I, I, like, I want to see how things go with this. I, I mean, this is one of those times I really wish that, um, I, I, like, I really wish Yuta was around just to see that. So he can go ape shit and just beat the hell out of this dude. So, but, alas, he's busy. He's doing his own thing. Anyway, other than that, though, uh, comment below. 
Tell me your thoughts are about this chapter and how you think this is gonna go. Uh, like, this outside of of Maki, uh, Mai, and Megumi, like, are there any people in Zenin that you would just actually want to keep around? Like, like, and Ma Mai is, she's not the nicest, but we know that she's just kind of, she's just got a little bit of a mean personality. I would assume based on the Zenin, you know, just growing up the Zenin clan, but she isn't inherently bad. We know that from like uh, during the uh, Kyoto versus uh, Tokyo match, like after she lost, like she's not evil. She's not like. Like, like, rotten and beyond saving. She's just kind of mean. But anyway, other than that, no comment below. Thumbs up the video. If a friend like, button, subscribe, and I'll check out my other videos. But on that, I appreciate everybody's already subscribed. And I thank you all for listening.